Hi, it's Bang for Buck PC Gamer here, and I'm going to make a quick video on how to overclock the new AMD R9 290. Now, the first thing you're going to need is the new and latest beta version of MSI Afterburner, which is for beta 17. The reason you're going to need the latest version is because the previous versions do not have the core voltage tweak option, which is available here. Right, there's two things I need to stress which I think are really really important. The first thing is no two cards are the same and what I mean is each card regardless of the specs and uh, model they have different overclocking capabilities for example your R9290 might do if you're lucky 1200 on the core mine may only do 1100 and saying that mine might do 1500 megahertz on the memory your one might only do 1350 that's just the way it is each card is different in that regard so you have to bear that in mind second thing is this card runs really hot and that's the main reason is because you know AMD saw fit to lock the fan profile to 47 percent and unlike for R9290X with the BIOS switch which enables uber mode which pushes the fans profile to a maximum of 55% things get really really hot and you know you, you're gonna have to create a custom and aggressive more aggressive fan profile to keep your temperatures in check the main reason we want to keep the temperatures in check even though this card can run at 95 degrees Celsius it's not necessarily desirable and it's just to avoid any throttling issues which may make the card back off and lose performance because the whole point of overclocking is to increase performance okay so the first thing we're going to do is create a custom fan profile we would have to click the settings option click the fan tab and check the box that says enable user defined automatic fan control I've had mine already set up your one won't look like this the first time you do it but this is how mine is set up I've it's got the temperature at the bottom and the fan percentage on the side what I've done is between 40 and 50 percent the fan will run at 30 degrees 30 percent so I won't hear it and that's generally when I'm idling surfing the net and stuff I don't want to hear my card unless I'm using it now when I'm doing something more intensive like playing a game you know it's gonna increase in um, percentage of, of, of fan speed and the temperature is gonna go up with it so I've found that while gaming I'm usually in between 70 between anything between 60 and 80 degrees my fans will be running between 70 to 75 percent in the event of it ever breaching the 80 percent um, Celsius 80 degrees Celsius um, I you know set the fans up to increase to the maximum of 80 percent to make sure it, you know to keep things cool I know this is really really loud and some people will be like you're insane to have your fan profile running your card that fast but um, I wanted to find the absolute limits of my card and, and I'm quite com comfortable to compromise on the acoustic side I mean I care about the raw performance and you're playing a game like Battlefield 4 and there's a gun battle going on and there's explosions everywhere you, you got your volume up at a decent level you're not really going to hear it you know, same goes as like a game like Total War Shogun, and there's like, you know, you you you're trying to take over someone's territory, and there's this massive battle going on. You're not you're gonna hear clashes of steel. You're not really gonna be hearing your fans. So I'm, I'm quite happy to compromise on the on the acoustics for the performance in that regard. Anyway, once you've set your custom fan profile, make sure you click user defined. It automatically did it there but just in case it doesn't you click user defined and it will glow up green that will mean your your fan custom fan profile is active right so now let's get into the overclocking the first thing you need to do is increase your power limit to 50% now this doesn't actually overvolt your card what it does it will allow the card to draw the maximum amount of power available and of course that's exactly what I want my car to do so I quite happily slide it back to the maximum the next thing you're going to want to do is try and find your maximum core 
speed. And the best way to do that is to increase it in increments of 10, 15 or 20, depending on how far you want to do it. I mean, if you're impatient, you can even do it in steps of 50 or 25 for, for the sakes of time. But um, if you really, really want to fine tune your card, I would recommend anything between 10 and 15. So what I would do now is increase this by, you know, by about, about 20 and apply. That's gone up to 970 and I'll run an application like 3D Mark or I mean Unity in um, Heaven. And I'll run that in window mode at a decent resolution. Say something like even yeah, 1280 by 720. I'll do a full loop of its benchmark um, setting. And then what I would be looking for is artifacts and graphical anomalies like things that shouldn't be there. And that generally means you're running into your maximum that your core will do. And uh, once you've done that, once you found gra artifacts and graphical anomalies, you need to start backing off on the core till those artifacts disappear. So, for argument's sake, I found my maximum, which with a, without a voltage increase, which was eleven ten. So, you know, I found that, and then the best thing to do is to now try and find your memory. Um, the maximum of your memory. The best thing to do is to reset it, go back to default and do your memory individually. So my core clock's back to default and now I'm now going to try and start overclocking my memory in the same way increasing in the increments of 20 to 25 or 10 to 15 depending on how finely you want to tune it. I already know my maximum and my maximum without any voltage increase was 1500 now I know my maximum core clock was 1110 but sometimes when you combine the two you're no longer stable and you need to back off on the core or back off on the memory until it runs stable so that's why I say do them individually so you know which what your maximums are because sometimes say for example I was increasing these together and my I had a maximum core clock of 1400 and once I hit the maximum 1400 on my memory it started locking up the system but my my core was happy to go on to maybe say 1150 I don't want to be confused and thinking that that's also my maximum um, core clock because of my memory is holding me back so you want to find your your maximums individually so anyway, my maximum without any voltage increase are fifteen hundred on the memory and eleven ten on the core. Now let's start increasing the voltage. I think MSI Afterburner has gone on the safe side and only allowed you to do like point one increase to the voltage. So that's like I know it says one hundred, but the, the car generally runs between 1.2 volts so this will make it just run over 1.3 once you max it out so it's not really a, a massive increase and you're not gonna like burn your card out or anything like that so I was happy to put it to plus 100 because that would mean whatever overclock I find um, um, when I start running into stability issues that is how far my card is gonna go I mean, I've, got the maximum voltage available to me. Once I did that I was able to push my core up to 1180 and once you find your maximum core you can start backing off on the voltage and seeing if it was still stable. Once I did that I was able to find my maximum core voltage and um, run my, my max core clock with um, reduced core voltage so now instead of using 100 I was able to find my maximum core clock with an 88 plus 88 on the core which was pretty good um, if you click this drop down arrow your memory voltage option is greyed out because you don't actually have the actual control over your memory voltage but you have this thing called AUX voltage a lot of people are saying it's PLL voltage and it helps stabilize those extra few megahertz of your overclock um, I found that when I increased this to even a little bit plus 13 I was able to push 
my actual memory overclock to maximum actually max completely max out the side at 1625 and I'm not saying you should go crazy and do this yourself because um, I've got a really really good overclocking card I got lucky with mine you might not even get anywhere close to 1500 regardless of overclocking the memory or overclocking the voltage I mean so bear that in mind stick to the procedure and increase it by 10 and 20 until you find any stability issues anyway I've done all of that hard work and I've done all the stress testing and my maximums were 1625 on the core 1180 I mean 1625 on my memory 1180 on the core with a voltage increase of plus 88 and an AUX voltage increase of plus 13. With my custom pan profile, it was rock solid. I mean, I've played games like Battlefield 4 for over an hour. Um, temperatures not going over 88 degrees and not having any artifacts and no system lockups whatsoever. So I was very happy with uh, the overclocking potential of my card. Right now I'm going to show you the performance gains you get from actually doing overclocking. Now I've compiled a few screenshots taken from my benchmarks previous, previously like I did benchmarks of 3D Mark Vantage, 3D Mark 11 and uh, Unigen um, Valley 1.0 before and after overclocking so you can see what kind of performance gains you actually get from doing this. So these are the stock settings just to let you know all the stock settings are going to be displayed on the left hand side and then all the overclock settings will be displayed on the right hand side so I'll start off with the stock 3D mark score which is the P score and I'll show you the overclock score as well so as you can see Four thousand one hundred and forty-one thousand seven hundred and eighty-four GPU score when it's not overclocked. When you do overclock it, you get forty-seven thousand seven hundred and twelve GPU score. So that's like a six thousand point increase, which is a very very hefty chunk of a performance increase just from tweaking your GPU. Now I'll show you 3D Mark 11 stock scores and a 3D Mark 11 overclock scores now my stock score was 13,913 on the graphic score when I overclocked it, it bumped all the way up to 17,159. So that's a, you know another hefty chunk of performance increase just from tweaking your GPU. Now a lot of people will say, well, these are just synthetic benchmarks. You know, it doesn't really translate into real-world FPS games while you're playing normal games. Well, applications like Unigine Heaven and Unigine Valley are, you know, they're to simulate. You know actual gameplay and um, you know I took some screenshots of uh, the results of those as well so if you want to check out you know Unigen Valley you get 56.6 .6 frames per second with it at stock you know when you overclock for R9290 to the settings that I got You end up getting a score of you know 68.9 frames per second so that's like a over a 10 frames per second increase so it is actually worth doing and 10 for 10 frames per second is a big deal when it comes to GPUs that's that's quite a landslide actually so you know it's well worth doing this is one of the reasons I chose the R9290 over the 290X because not only is the 290X a lot more expensive, it's like £130 more expensive than R9290 over here in the UK. But when you overclock a card like the R9290 to the clocks that I have, it outperforms the 290X. So you're, you're saving money and gaining performance in most scenarios.